watch the uh, you could go back and uh, and and watch the service again. So uh, if there are no other announcements, then uh, we'll turn the uh, service. Ahead. Good morning. Welcome, Chris. This Victor. Day today, we wish God's blessings on our mothers today and uh, as they celebrate. And uh, we're happy to uh, have everyone join us via Zoom this morning. Uh, please do note that uh, we've got a different liturgy this morning, and so this will be a great opportunity to, for you to hear some things a little differently. And uh, we hope that will be something that you enjoy uh, and are able to uh, follow along on. Uh, we appreciate uh, Rachel leading us today and Laura. They've been working on this, and so they've got it down. And, uh, to uh, being led through that. Uh, it's a liturgy by Marty Haugen, and so we, uh, we give thanks for that opportunity to, to share that today. A couple of things to share with you this morning. Uh, as Tom mentioned, uh, we continue to be available. Uh, I'm in and out of the office during the week, but if you need something specifically, please don't hesitate to let me know that. Uh, we do have a couple of prayer concerns to bring to your attention this morning. Uh, we continue to remember uh, Katrina Davis and Tom McCoy. Uh, Katrina's dad is in an assisted living facility in Maryland, and uh, they've had some issues or some uh, incidents of uh, the COVID-19 virus in that particular facility. As our, it's our understanding, he still has tested negative, but because of the environment, we certainly wish uh, to keep them in our thoughts and prayers uh, during this tenuous time, as well as all who have been impacted by the virus. Uh, also, we remember uh, Mac and Jeannie Branham and their family at their grandson Josh's uh, testing positive and uh, having some symptoms with the COVID-19. Uh, he works at an assisted living facility in Maryland. And so we uh, ask that you keep him in your thoughts and prayers as well. Let us prepare hearts and minds for worship this morning. I invite you to join me in the order for confession and forgiveness this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 
Holy Spirit be with you all. We continue our worship with the reading of our lessons.
First reading is from the book of Acts, the seventh chapter. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. The second reading is from the second chapter of 1 Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a pre holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. You then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? 
Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I want to take a moment this morning to share some time with our children uh, on this fifth Sunday of Easter, but also this Mother's Day. And I brought something with me to show. It's a Mother's Day card. Happy Mother's Day. Maybe you have made a card for your mom or at least shared how much she means to you, how special she is on this very special day for her. Many times we make cards to share how we feel about our moms, especially on this day, what we're thankful for, what they mean to us, what they do for us, and how much we love them. What would you write in a card on Mother's Day? Well, here's some things that some other children actually wrote in their Mother's Day cards. Thank you, Mom, for making me food so I don't die. Brenda. Happy Mother's Day. I hope you have a great Mother's Day today. We were going to make you pancakes, but Melanie didn't know how to do that. So we were going to make eggs, but there's no bacon. Well, happy Mother's Day. Dear Mom, thank you for doing everything for me, but why don't you let me have desserts? I like you because you care for me. To Mom. I love you so much. I really love you no matter what. Even if you were a UFO or what, I will be your son no matter what. And mama, when I ask you for a laptop, you have to trust me, okay? Mom, in the animal kingdom, moms are the one thing you can't beat. Thank you, mom, for being wonderful, caring, and not making your meatloaf anymore. And this last one, dear mom, thank you for giving birth to me. I like it a lot. Your son, Drew. Different children sharing their thoughts and their love for their moms, for all the things their moms do for them. They care for them. They feed them. They clothe them. Your mom does that for you, doesn't she? She takes care of you. She looks out for you. She makes sure you have enough to eat or things to wear. She makes things, things wonderful at home for you, too, doesn't she? She protects you and keeps you safe. She loves you. Today in our gospel lesson, the words that I just read, we hear about Jesus and his family, his disciples. And they are afraid that Jesus is going to leave them. Jesus has to go away for a little while and they're not sure where he's going or what's going to happen to them. And so they're worried. But Jesus tells them, don't worry, don't worry. I love you, I will take care of you. You'll never be alone. I will always be with you. Jesus, like a mother, cares for us, loves us, provides for the things that we need, and always stays with us. Jesus shares his love in such a way that we can share it with one another. Just like our mothers share their love with us, we can share that with them and others as well. So on this special day, give thanks for your mom. Share your love with her. And also give thanks for Jesus and share his love with the world. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Not long ago, a fellow pastor shared of an activity that took place in a seminary course one day. The professor of New Testament studies was known for using elaborate object lessons as a teaching method in his class. Sometimes the things ended up with wonderful results, and sometimes they left the students questioning or struggling to understand what the professor intended. One afternoon, the students walked into the classroom, and they knew they were in for, in for an interesting lesson that day. But there on the bulletin board on the wall was a card drawn on a large piece of paper. And near it, on a table, were many, many darts. As the class began, the professor whetted the student's curiosity by handing each student a blank piece of paper, a marker as well. And after giving each student those items, gave them this instruction. Has anyone ever deeply hurt you? Has anyone ever wronged you? or made you just terribly angry, then I want to invite you to draw a person, a picture of that person. Doesn't have to be a detailed portrait by any means, but just, just a likeness. And when you're done, I'm going to give you an opportunity, an opportunity to throw darts at the picture. Some of the folks looked very uncomfortable when he said that. That seemed so out of character with what they were trying to learn and what they were trying to proclaim. But the majority of the students began to get busy immediately. One young lady drew a picture of a guy and a girl, the girl who had stole, stolen her boyfriend in high school. Another student drew a picture of a guy from high school who picked on him, who had embarrassed him over and over as well. It was amazing how quickly the students could recall certain specific instances or individuals. And it was amazing how much time and emotion and energy they put into their drawings. In fact, when the professor called a halt to the drawing, many began to protest and said they weren't done yet. They weren't ready. But time was up. The class members lined up and one by one, they would pin their picture to the target. And then they would throw the darts at the picture. It began to lead to laughter and even a sense of satisfaction as student after student did that. In fact, some students began to throw their darts with such emotion and force that the target began to tear. And the exercise finally came to a halt as the professor asked the students to return to their seats with their pictures. The students began holding up and sharing their pictures with one another, laughing and carrying on as the professor walked quietly over to the bulletin board. And he reached up and removed the target from the board. And there was an audible gasp in the room. For there, beneath the target, they now saw a mangled picture of the face of Jesus. Holes and tears covered the face. And the professor simply said these words, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. As every eye was focused on the image of Christ, the professor simply said, forgiveness, fellowship, life with one another and others in the body of Christ, are two of the greatest gifts you will ever receive and ever have the privilege to experience and to share. But sometimes they can be the most challenging. Forgiveness is one of the most difficult acts for us in our walk as disciples of Jesus. Sometimes, even when we think we've done it, years later, it still stirs emotions within us as we remember certain difficult or hurtful things. And yet, forgiveness is the gift that Christ gives us and calls us to give one another. 
along with forgiveness, fellowship, that we're called to share. It's foundational in our relationship with one another and our relationship with Christ. But Jesus says, when you've done it to the least of these, my brethren, you've done it to me. These things, forgiveness and fellowship, I think are marks of discipleship. They help identify us as a church together. Stephen, one of the first martyrs of the Christian church, I think understood that well. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen understood Jesus to be the way, the truth, the life. He sought to live his life in response to that. There were times, and those who were offended and threatened by Stephen, by his commitment and witness, so much so that they took it upon themselves to eliminate the problem by stoning Stephen. The incredible thing is that while they were in the very act of stoning Stephen, rather than curse him, Stephen forgave him. You heard the words in our lesson from Acts this morning. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And then Stephen knelt down and in a loud voice cried out, Lord, do not hold the sin against them. And when he had said this, he died. What a startling image that's captured there in the book of Acts. While his persecutors rain stones down upon Stephen, he lifts them up in prayer. Prayer for forgiveness, prayer for mercy, prayer for grace. How could he do it? I mean, why would he do it? I think it goes back to the very first line of the words from our reading in Acts this morning, which describes Stephen as filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit, he was able to do things that we simply can't do on our own. You've probably heard the old saying that it's what is on the inside of the person who happens. And I think that may be true to a great extent of all who embrace the Christian faith, including you and me. Dr. Fred Craddock, who was professor at Emory University's Taylor School of Theology in Atlanta, once shared a significant insight about this very thing. In his writing, The Absence of Christ, he shares the following thoughts. Like, one of the difficulties I had when I was in the parish ministry before going into teaching was that I had this notion that people in the congregation shared such a deep bond with one another that they missed each other when they were absent. In fact, I thought that the congregational bond was so deep that people would not be absent from church unless it was just necessary, unless they were sick. On almost every Saturday night, I would picture the congregation in my mind and visualize where everyone sat. And then on Sunday morning, when I get up to preach, there would be this one absent or that one absent. And you know what I assumed? I assumed that they must be sick. Call me naive, but it never occurred to me that even after years of ministry, they might have been elsewhere, fishing or picnicking or simply sleeping in. Absent from the body. And I had the feeling that the people of Christ were filled with the Spirit have a bond so deep that if one is absent, a lot of other people feel that absence. I had the notion that if I missed a Sunday, everybody would miss me. If you missed a Sunday, everybody would miss you. And it wasn't a matter of saying, are we going to church or not? It was a matter of, are we being the church or not? Because we have this bond. I think that bond is even more special and necessary in this time of social distancing. You and I share a bond, and I will tell you, when you are absent, or I am absent from you, I think we feel that. It's challenging, it's hard, it's difficult. Just yesterday, we saw one of our members in Walmart as we went to pick up an item. And the first impulse was we wanted to exchange a hug, we wanted to shake hands, we wanted to greet each other, but we couldn't do that because of the social distance. The bond we share is deep, and we want to show that and share that. But one of the things that we can still do is do that through this means. 
verbally in prayer, caring for one another. In Dr. Craddock's mind, it was what was on the inside that counted, the bond that we carry as one another in the body of Christ, characterized by forgiveness, by fellowship, by those marks of faith. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's evident in our behavior. We have a bond with one another, just as Stephen had with his sisters and brothers in the early church. The Apostle Paul describes it this way. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. Not just one of brick or mortar, but a spiritual house, which we share. For you are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. God's own people. In order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who has called you out of darkness into the light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. What a marvelous, powerful picture Peter paints of the bond that we share, the fellowship that we share with one another. Living stones. We find our lives and faith resting on that foundation of forgiveness, that fellowship with Jesus Christ as our chief cornerstone. We share a deep bond, you and I, with one another. That's what it means to be church. Amen. God has made us his people for our baptisms into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promise, hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and in all places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in me. Build us up, gracious God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your law. We pray this day for all congregations everywhere who bear witness to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world that you have made. You have made us stewards of your creation. Help us, we pray, to act responsibly, faithfully, gracefully. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O oh Lord. We pray for communities and countries, leaders and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles or anxieties or cares. Comfort those in their suffering, ease their distress, carry their burdens. Be especially this day with the Brannan family, with Katrina and Tom and their family, and all who are impacted by illness, grief, anxiety. Keep us all in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children for the safe pregnancies of expected parents, for families who struggle with infertility or miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care in our lives and in our world. And we remember all for whom this day can be difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold to the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With the bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. With you. Yeah. We share Christ's peace with those who are home or around us. That's peace. Peace with everyone. Peace with you. Peace with you all. Peace with you. 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 Peace be with you. We hope that you have an opportunity to share God's peace with uh, those in your home and those around you. Uh, even in the afternoons and in the evenings, I will still get things through the email or on my text to share with people. Uh, and it's greatly appreciated, and we can still stay in contact with each other in that way. Uh, this time in our worship service, we typically receive our offerings and tithes. 
uh, in great gratitude for what God has our opportunities to share in God's kingdom and God's ministries throughout the world. We continue to reach out to those in need as a congregation, even though we may be physically distanced, we are together as God's people built into that spiritual house that we hear about in our lessons this morning. And as such, we support one another. We support God's work in the world. And if you stand in special need of any uh, assistance, please let us know that as well. But we give thanks for all who faithfully continue to support the ministries through your offerings through our uh, simply giving or through those that are shared at the church in the mailbox or through the mail or however you choose to do that. We continue our worship with the prayer that our Lord first taught us. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the one who brought Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace and share the good news. We hope you have an opportunity to share in some conversation and fellowship now as we enjoy this time together as the family of Christus Victor. Mm. Thank you all for the service. Thank you for the service. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Mother's thank you. Way to start the day. Hope everybody has a good week. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Hey, Tracy. Notice we have hey, Michelle Metzler. Hey. Yeah, I saw Michelle. Pastor Sal.